Quick shots have been around in Mavic Drone for a long time, but I must admit that in the past I never took them seriously. But Mavic Mini doesn't have any intelligent flight mode, so I did test its quick shots, as they are the only automated move with this drone, and I started to realize that they can actually be very useful in several situations. In this video I will show you how they can be used not only when shooting people, but also in several other situations. For example, in uh, establishing a scene or in real estate. I have done several in-depth videos about different aspects of the Mavic Air 2. You will find the link at the end of this video and in the description below. If you're interested in drone, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It is roasting hot here in Sicily at the moment, end of July. So I head up to Mighty Mount Etna for a bit of fresh air and some very unusual scenery. In this video I will use a Mavic Air 2, but the same quick shots are available in the Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom, while the Mini only lacks the last two, Boomerang and Asteroid. After a firmware upgrade, it is now possible to shoot quick shot with the Mavic Air 2 not only in 1080, but also in 2.7K and in 4K, as you can see in the camera tab of the settings. It is also possible to choose between normal and this in a like mode, both in H.264 or H.265, which is very useful if you plan to color grade the footage. I generally always use this in a like at H265, but in this case I prefer to keep things simple, so I will go for normal mode in H264. I always suggest to use manual white balance and manual exposure, even more so with quick shots, as they involve a good deal of movement and different camera orientations. So the amount of light may change a lot, and if you're using auto white balance or auto exposure, the luminosity will change very abruptly. Notice that the quick shot menu is only available with the drone flying at a height of at least a couple of meters. Choose an area free of obstacles, as with each quick shot the drone will fly automatically and it's not possible to use any of the control in the remote controllers, the two sticks or the wheel for tilting the gimbal. During a shot it is possible to abort it by tapping on the white X on the red shutter. This is useful if you should detect an unexpected obstacle. The aircraft will move backwards and slightly upwards while keeping the target centered in the frame. In this mode, like several others, it is possible to choose the distance the aircraft will travel during the shot. Let's go for the shortest one, 25 meters. Then we choose our target. The software will detect any obvious target and put a plus sign on them, or else we can draw a box around it. Let's choose this distinguished gentleman and then hit the green start button. The aircraft will travel backwards for the specified distance at a 45 degrees angle. At the end of the shot it will return to the starting position. Let's try another one, this time using a much longer distance. We have the possibility to go all the way up to 120 meters. Let's choose 100, always checking first that there are no obstacles in the way. People tend to think about QuickShot as a tool just for sophisticated selfies. But this drone is, is actually very useful any time we need a smooth straight movement, pulling away from any sort of target at constant speed. It can be for real estate shots or a pull out at the end of a movie revealing surrounding elements of a scene.
If there are no moving parts like cars, people or running water, it is possible to revert the move in post-production and have instead a punch-in shot. Notice that in this clip there is someone walking backwards. Strange thing to do. After reversing the shot, it can also be an excellent starting point for a vertigo shot. If you're not familiar with how to achieve the vertigo effect, please check my video about it. In this mode, aircraft moves upwards, keeping the target in the center of the frame and advancing until directly on top of the subject. It is possible to set the altitude. Let's try the lowest one at 25 meters first. And then another one at a higher altitude, 65 meters. When used with people, I don't find this mode particularly exciting, but I expect it to be useful for some crane-like shot of buildings or other landmarks. Let's give it a try. In this case, I would like to start facing this building at eye level, so I select a moderate height, 30 meters. Then I choose to target this triangle-like area in the roof. As you can see the camera ascend and slightly advances while tilting down the gimbal to keep the target in the middle of the frame. Very much like a traditional movie camera on a very large crane. The move can then be reversed for an interesting revealing shot. In this mode the drone will orbit around the target at a constant radius which is the distance of the aircraft from the target when the shot starts. Unlike the previous modes, we don't choose the distance from the menu, but we can adjust the distance of the drone before the shot. Then we can choose the direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, by using the yellow arrows. Let's try a close-up with the drone very close to the target. In this case, the drone will move very slowly, if we increase the distance from the target, the move will be faster. Let's see how far from the subject we can go. Here I'm trying at around 60 meters and it sorts of works, although it's not tracking me anymore, but it continues to circle around an area close to me. I think we are around the maximum distance. Probably if I was wearing colors with more contrast with the background, it would help. Let's try with a target very far away, but with more contrast in color. This turn on the road is much lighter than the surrounding areas, and this is a couple of hundred meters away. Circle mode works for a while, but as you can see, it ends up losing the target. Can this quick shot follow a moving target? After starting the orbit, I walk away from my initial location and indeed the drone follows me, keeping me in the center of the frame. Very good. Orbiting is always a very useful move, so this quick shot will be excellent for the Mavic Mini, since it doesn't have any intelligent flight modes. But in the Air 2 and in the Mavic 2 line, this shot is frankly redundant, as they have the point of interest mode that can do all of this and much, much more.
This one is probably my favorite. The drone will circle around the target while ascending. We can choose the value of the maximum radius as well as the direction. Let's start with a very short one at 25 meters. Let's go now for a much wider one, a value of 100 meters. As you can see, this quick shot does an excellent job of revealing the surrounding landscape in a very interesting way. I can see a lot of useful situation for it. He can also follow a moving target and keep it in the middle of the frame during his trip. This shot did some extra care about obstacles around the scene, as the move is quite hard to predict. This is a variation of Alex. The drone will travel away diagonally from the target while ascending and then come back to the other side of the target after drawing a sort of narrow ellipse around it. There is no control of the distance traveled, but in the right situation this shot can reveal the landscape in a quite spectacular way. In this mode the drone will fly straight up, at maximum height, and then takes several photos to shoot a sphere panorama. It then creates a low resolution video of the well known tiny planet. It is good fun for the first couple of times and will impress friends who have never seen this before, but I don't really see any other practical use for this shoot. I must admit that after discovering quick shots, I am now using some of them very often, mostly Rocket, Elix and Boomerang. In the right situations they open up space for creativity. If you're interested in drone, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.